Welcome to Homa Studios Technology Topics Playlist. This is RGB in hex color, the short version. I have an older version called RGB in hex color explained from my Homa WCCC channel, which is longer, but I wanted to put together a newer version and also a shorter version for the time challenged. Now we'll start off by taking a look at some RGB sliders. These are actually the sliders in PowerPoint, which are fine. And they have red, green, and blue sliders, and they go from 0 to 255. And it even shows the hex color down here, so we'll be able to check that out as well. And if all the sliders are off, it's kind of like the lights are off, so everything's down at 0 and everything's black. If we put all the lights on, everything will be white, and all the colors will be white, and we'll end up with 255, 255, 255 as our RGB color, and you can see we have a hex color down here as well, and everything's white. If you have them all on red, if only the red slider is up, it's going to be solid red. And you can see you can go down and make it a darker red as you turn off the light. Always think of these as turning out the lights as you move the sliders and turning on the lights. So same thing with the green. When the green's all the way up, you can make a darker green as you go down. And same thing with the blue. So that makes sense. The mixing of the colors is a little different because it's additive color, so it's mixing light. It's not like mixing paint or ink or anything like that. So just for example, if you mix green or blue, you get cyan, which isn't that unusual. But if you mix red and green, you get yellow when those lights are on. And as you go down with both of these, if you keep them together, you'll get kind of a darker yellow. So if you wanted a darker yellow, you can move these down a little bit. And again, that'll be like turning out the lights on the bright yellow that you're working with. And then also, if you mix red and blue, you get a magenta color. And as you move these down together, you're turning off the light on the magenta, and you'll get kind of a darker magenta. So that's the way RGB works. But there's hex color down there, and these are a little harder to figure out. And basically, all that hex color does is it just takes a possible range of three numbers for each color, and you only use two. So, you know, even if you had a number that were all three, you know, now we have nine number spaces that we're using. We're using three, three, and three, and in hex, you're using two, two, and two, and you're always using two, two, and two to display those colors. Let's look at hexadecimal colors in a little more detail. Now, if we look at base 10 numbers, those are the numbers we work with all the time. We basically have 10 integers, 0 through 9. If we wanted a number, let's say 45, we would indicate that number in the position of a tens place and a ones place. We would have four tens, which would give us 40, and we'd have five ones, which would give us the five, and we get 45 altogether. And if we needed a hundredth, if we needed another place, we'd keep moving to the left to build up something like 145. We would have one 100, and then a four, and then a five, and so on. Now in the hexadecimal system, we don't use 10 digits, we use 16 digits starting from 0 through 9 instead of using numbers for 10 11 by just mixing other numbers by using a 1 and a 0 and a 1 and a 1 and so on we actually have different numbers and since we don't have different numbers we use letters so basically a is 10 b is 11 c is 12 d is 13 e is 14 and f is 15 so that's the way it works so when we work with this we have a 16s place of our number and we have a ones place and that's it. So it's actually not that difficult if you just know your 16s times table. Now if you wanted the number 45 in hex, you'd have to figure out how many 16s are in 45 and then how many 1. So we don't know what that is yet, so let's work on figuring that out. We can start by getting the 16s by just going 45 divided by 16 and only two 16s will fit in there. If we did three, that would take us to 48 and it would put us over. So if we only did two, that would put us at 32. But first of all, we'll just focus on getting the two. So we have two 16s. So we'll start with that. So that's our first number in hex. We have a two. Then for our ones, we basically just use our leftover ones. So we would just do 45 minus 32, and our leftover is 13. We'd basically have two in the 16s place, and we'd have 13 in the ones place. Except, as I just mentioned, we don't have a 13 in hex. So we're going to use D, because D matches up with 13 in hex. So we could put them together so it looks nice and it would be 2D. So that number would be 45. We got that by getting 32 by saying we had two 16s and then the leftover 13 ones gave us 45. So that's how we figured that out. So let's try one out. Let's say we have an RGB color of 204, 102, and 0 and we want to figure out the hex equivalent. We'd have to start off by figuring how many 16s are in 204 by dividing. 
you could do that on your calculator. You could do something like this and just do 204 divided by 16 and you get 12. Ignore the remainder. So you get 12. And if you did 12 times 16 just to see what that is without the remainder, you get 192. So 12 would be the first, would be the number of 16s. So remember, we don't have a 12, so we'd have to use, we'd have to look at the bottom here, my little cheater area, and we'd have to go to A, B, and C, and C would be 12. So we'd start off with a C, and then we actually had 12 left over because we had 192. 204 minus 192 left us with 12. So we had C for the 16's place, and then we had C for the 1's place. So we get C, C for 204. And then same thing with 102. We could go back, and we could use our calculator, and we can just do 102 divided by 16, and we get 6. And 6 times 16 is 96. So if you take 102 minus 96, you get 6. So that means we have 6 16s and 6 1s would give us 66 for our hex would match up to 102. And then the zero, we wouldn't have to really figure out, but we would still put a zero for the 16s and a zero for the ones. We'd still put two zeros there. And this is the color that comes out from that, kind of a rusty orange kind of color. So that's our hex equivalent, and that's actually a web safe color. Now, if we had to go the other way, if we had 99, now this is a little easier, because we could basically just do nine times 16, which is 144, plus the second number, which is nine, and that comes out to 153. And then for the next one, for FF, we do 15, because we know that F down at the bottom is 15. So we have 15 16s, which if we multiply that, use a calculator if you want, is 240. And then the leftover is F, which is also 15. And putting that together, we end up with 255. And the last one, it's a little easier because the numbers are getting smaller. If we have if we have three 16s, we know that's going to be 48, and then we'll just have three left over, and that will leave us with 51, which gives us kind of this uh, lime green color. So that's going from hex to RGB. So that's our shorter overview of RGB and hex color.